Hi, once again, it's Alexi from Adventure Grapher here. And in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create a, a dreamy glow or a soft fantasy-like atmosphere in your images with Photoshop. This technique is great for both landscapes and portraits if you want to achieve that a bit more dreamy and glowing look. Here you can see a couple of example images where I have used this effect. In this tutorial, we are going to take this image and add the effect to make it look like this. So let's open Photoshop where we already have an otherwise edited image that is only waiting for us to add this glowing effect. As you can see, we have multiple layers here, so we need to start by duplicating and merging all the visible layers into one single layer. You can do this by hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E on your keyboard but of course it's also fine to duplicate all the layers first and then merge them together. Now that we have this new layer, we want to select the highlights that we want to make glow. So let's hit select, color range and then choose highlights and play with the settings until the selection matches those highlights that you want to make glow. I usually find it easiest to do when I have the uh, black matte selected on this lower drop down menu. When you are happy with the selection, hit OK. Now that you have the highlights selected, uh, hit Ctrl J to duplicate all of these highlights into their own layer. Let's name this layer Highlights and the previous layer we will call Glow. At this point I recommend converting both of these layers into smart objects. It's not absolutely necessary, but that will give us a lot more flexibility a bit later. So we select the Glow and we hit Convert to Smart Object. And then we do the same with the Highlights layer. Next select the Highlights layer and hit Image, Adjustments and Curves. And lift the curve all the way up to make the highlights super bright. Now we can lower the opacity of this layer to around 50% and then select Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur. And here we can finally start to see the effect of this technique. If you want a soft large glow, select a higher radius and if you want a smaller, more intense glow, stick with the low radius. The best setting depends on many things like the resolution of your image, but for many of my images I use something like 18. Now that we have the glow, we usually want to drop its opacity to somewhere around 20%, but to emphasize the effect for this tutorial I will leave it at 40. And here on the highlight parts we can already see the nice glowing effect uh, starting to take place. Now that we have the first part of the effect done, you should activate the browser window in which you are playing this YouTube video and then go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell right below it. I promise you will get all your money back if you someday regret following me. Ok, get back to Photoshop and this time uh, select the glow layer and lower its opacity to around 50% as well. Then once again hit Image, Adjustments and Curves. And here you can uh, add some contrast to the image by pulling the shadows down and then slightly raising the highlight brightness. Following the same pattern, we go to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur. And again we play with the radius until we are happy with the glowing effect we are getting. Usually the radius of the glow should be higher than the radius you selected for the highlights layer so I will go with something like 40. Let's hit OK and then lower the opacity of the layer until we have the look we want. I usually go pretty low, maybe even under 10% for the opacity of the glow layer, but to make the effect very obvious for this tutorial, we only take it down to 25. At this point the image is looking very soft and dreamy, but we might still want to fine tune some of the settings and this is where using smart objects makes our life a lot easier. We can simply click any of the effects below our glow and highlight layers to modify them. If we for example want a bigger highlight glow, we just open that Gaussian blur effect under that layer and increase the radius or decrease it for a more intense glow. Of course we can also play with the opacity of both of these layers or the curves effect to get more or less contrast. If you want to see a before and after with the effect, it's helpful to put both of these layers in a folder. Let's call it effect. This way we can toggle the whole effect on and off. 
One more thing we want to do at this point is to add a layer mask at least to the highlights layer. This way we can mask out the effect from those parts of the image where we don't want it to show. For example, I don't like how the sky looks so blurry and I don't want the mountain on the background uh, to glow like the ice on the foreground. Okay, when we are completely happy with the effect, we want to flatten the whole image or duplicate and merge all the visible layers again to have one layer with our final image. Then we select Filter, Sharpen and Smart Sharpen. And here we can add final sharpening to the image. And here we have our finished image with the dreamy glow effect added. I know I went pretty overkill with the opacity of both of those effect layers, so keep in mind that the key to make this effect look the best is to use it in moderation. This was actually the first tutorial I have ever created and it was such a pain in the ass. Uh, first I recorded the whole tutorial two times and when it came time to start editing I found out that the image quality was horrible. So I tweaked the settings and recorded the whole thing one more time. Or at least I thought I recorded it because um, for some reason I forgot to hit record um, on, on the recording software. And so I had to do it uh, the third time which finally worked out. If you made it this far and are still watching this video, it means that you are at least somewhat interested in Photoshop and maybe even After Effects and uh, Premiere tutorials. And if you are, and if you did uh, find this tutorial helpful, please, please leave me a comment below so I know people are watching and getting something out of this. So I get a little bit of extra motivation to do these tutorials in the future as well, even though um, my first experience with them wasn't really that painless. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next video.